हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल दिस इज प्रवीण हियर योर होस्ट योर मेंटर योर गाइड एंड योर टीचर गाइस so in the coming videos i'll be bringing the best content to you all i am preparing all the things which are required for the upcoming announcement which will be very very huge and as we are continuing to do our interview series i'll be continuing to do that also along with that i'll start some good things where i'll be giving you the 100% job placement right uh, with my uh, knowledge whatever i have acquired in this many years along with that i will also help you to guide to get your dream job so with that said i hope hope you have recently seen the thumbnail what is a thumbnail and you have come to this video so before starting this video i will be asking you all a question like what is the major thing where every devops and cloud engineer lack in the interview so i received many of the dms in linkedin also in the one to one sessions where people say uh, pravin i have learned many things but i am not able to attend the interview so when i am attending the interview i am not able to crack it when i am cracking it i am lacking confidence while i go to the job and do it or else i can do it or not so those many notions are coming into an individual's mind in order to solve those all those queries in this video i'll be helping you all with all my questions whatever i have cleared with top product based organizations right maybe sap airtel informatica amazon all those things the list is so long but yeah in order to make sure the time is saved and i want to make sure overall time for this video is also shortened i make sure it will i will keep around 15 minutes of this if i am not able to complete all the questions like i have 120 questions noted down uh, in this uh, document which i'll be sharing on to this video so make sure you watch till the end uh, so that you don't miss any of the content for this video so <clears throat> i have made all the uh, questions according to the tools which i have prepared for myself as well Well as whatever the interviewers have asked me in various rounds in various organizations so it will be definitely going to help you all to at least a 10 to 20% who are new to this devops field 50% who are at intermediate and 80 to 90% who are at a good level of understanding into the devops so going ahead with the first set of questions i have kubernetes explained in this if i am not able to complete all these questions in this video i'll be making a part 2 so comment down if you need a part 2 or if you don't need that anyways i'll be sharing the entire document in this video itself so check out that definitely check out that it will really 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 help you to get your dream job right so first thing foremost the kubernetes will be talking about what is the architecture of the kubernetes what does the control manager at cd like all the architectural components right every uh, interviewer will ask this question so make sure you know the architecture component designs in your organization as well as how those are placed into the uh, either of the cloud right so the next question is like what is a manifest file this is the base guys a file which helps us to create the pods so what are pods inside that our application resides into the inside the container right pod a container and the application like three layer of of, of things in the kubernetes so what is node affinity what is pod affinity what is tame toleration very very important guys so they will be asking the question okay uh, okay let's tell me like uh, how you have applied the tainting how you have applied the toleration for your applications so make sure you know this question what is node pod and cluster ip very very much important node pod is something where uh, the applications right when hosted in the uh, kubernetes node pod is the entry point for those applications into the cluster Uh, i mean entire kubernetes cluster whereas the cluster ip resides or helps the two cluster applications to talk to each other now let's consider this is a ui this is the microservice where you have uh, deployed your both the applications into different clusters now these two have to talk means they have to talk with the cluster ip but describe what is pod what is a pod life cycle very very much important so make sure you know all the life cycles of pod and also at least see how this pod is working when it is deployed into kubernetes right so you don't need to go anywhere only read this questions at least if you are not into uh, devops domain i guarantee you you will get a job definitely most of the people don't know uh, majority of the things uh, like uh, which i have documented and kept for you all so i am making uh, something from my hard work whatever i have received right i am sharing with you all so do subscribe my channel like it if you have liked till now like i have talked almost 4 minutes and subscribe to my channel share it with your friends because the huge announcements are coming yet so nevertheless yeah we'll go ahead so what is ingress 
controller very very much important there are uh, different types of controllers in kubernetes so make sure you at least know those answers like what is the controller uh, right and what it is doing actually right ingress is something like the traffic routing to different uh, applications right like a load balancer kind of thing uh, what are the types of services in kubernetes yes very very much important types of services you need to do how one pod talks to another pod so i have told you right this is a ui this is a microservice so you need to make sure how this ui is talking with microservice right so we need to apply some logical thinking we need to see like how these two applications are getting talk with each other so ever imagine like uh, let's take like amazon is there flipkart is there and amazon wants to showcase something on the flipkart ui both are different networks so imagine how these two are talking this is a complex scenario but whatever i am discussing on the ui in the front end this will be a easy scenario just google it like how these two are talking and you will get the different ideas on this question and we'll see how the pod health check guys why the health check is needed right why an individual also needs a health check because in order to make sure uh, we are at good at our health so we we usually go for the health check up similarly when an application is deployed into the pod so we want to see the application health check status whether that is up and running whether that is like no one will go and see inside the cluster whether that application is up and running so what we will do now we will place some health checks so health checks is nothing but for a java application let's take you are hitting www.helloworld.com slash hello one right hello one is the rest api call uh, or the status health check which will return back to the uh, to the ui uh, to the google uh, where we will get the data like uh, uh, okay up and running the application is up and running something kind of that so what this actually the health checks do right it will probe the application right it means like abhi tum zinda hai ki nahi it will ask every time the application the time frame which you have set like 1 minute 60 uh, seconds or something kind of that like 5 5 seconds you have to every 5 second if i have put the time stamp like that so every 5 second it will hit the pod and it will check the health check right so this health check if it is down now your application is down you will get an alert or you will get a log or you will get an email where your uh, where your uh, pod will be telling like okay uh, this is down so you need to go and check why and what you can do on the further troubleshooting activity so how to create a docker image yeah uh, okay sorry uh, i i came down yeah we were at uh, okay again yeah uh, we were at uh, how 11th question how one pod talks with the other pod how the pod health check is done how the monitoring is done very very much important so make sure uh, you tell something like this where uh, the kubernetes cluster is there and uh, in on the top of kubernetes cluster you have installed the prometheus as a agent and uh, this is kind of uh, the scraping of the metrics prometheus is basically a tool which will scrape the metrics from the kubernetes after that what you do on top of uh, prometheus you have grafana which is like a dashboard so let's take you have a application okay i cannot show all these things but yeah i have definitely brought one blackboard and one duster and one marker but the thing is the light setup is not so much good so i am not able to show you but if it was good i would have definitely shown you the layers of that but as of now just understand this is the first layer Uh, where our application is residing the second layer is uh, the container the third layer is pod fourth layer is cluster and the fifth layer is prometheus where our monitoring system is sitting on top of the cluster now what is happening is this uh, uh, prometheus uh, with the help of uh, let's say some tools are there right uh, uh, the fluent uh, bit and all those things which will uh, uh, send the logs to the uh, prometheus prometheus will extract it and then prometheus will send those logs to the uh, grafana now what happens how this grafana is coming into picture is grafana is a visualizer guys okay so now what happens is in this visualization uh, this prometheus whatever the data is uh, it has extracted it will send that into your uh, prometheus cluster and then the prometheus we write some grafana query languages gql now what is happening is uh, it is a little bit depth concepts but definitely i'll be bringing those videos soon like prometheus query language grafana query language how you can do the automations what are the automations you need to put in your resume all those things i'll definitely come and do uh, videos so now uh, promit we have discussed so much on the kubernetes it's already 9 minutes completed so what i will do is i'll quickly wrap up the things because i want to make this video short also i'm getting a little bit sweat guys because um, uh, i have switched off the ac i'm talking without the headphones right so i am making sure like you are able to understand what i am talking right so we will see what is docker actually the kubernetes and docker are very very much important in this market scenario so make sure you at least know uh, some basics of these two and also like linux i have put everything in detailed manner guys so don't worry don't go anywhere i am not telling like don't go anywhere in the sense don't watch any other videos but definitely this is a must and should be watched video i hope you guys are uh, liking the content what i am delivering just like it 
share it with your friends the channel because huge announcement as i have told you is coming in so what is inode in linux how it is uh, increasing it it's very very much important also we will be seeing uh, some of the things shell scripting guys very very much important i have put all the questions of the shell scripting whatever asked for me right some of the things are like how the data is fetched from a rest api what how the extraction of the data is done when a junk of data is given to you how to declare an array in a shell script what is a cron tab and some of the uses of the cron tab so definitely check out the shell scripting thing what is dollar hash dollar exclamatory mark dollar at very very much important some of the special variables in the linux right in the linux environment where we use and also uh, what is right uh, some of the scenarios are like write a shell script to extract the ip address from a file and count the similar number of ip addresses this was the question given in the citrix citrix is a top product based organizations so i hope you guys know that so this was the question given to me and they have given the id i was able to do it yeah i got selected also yeah that's another thing so now we will go ahead with the ci cd now already 11 minutes completed so in this ci cd we will talk about some of the things like design of the ci cd right first question whenever you tell okay i know the ci cd tool they will ask you okay tell me the entire end to end flow of this ci cd so make sure you know this uh, ci cd as a concept or at least if you don't know uh, what you can do is you can see some video where you can relate to your current organization and then frame your project right don't simply copy Face the projects from the other organizations or someone who have done other projects. It will hamper your uh, interview because the interviewer will come to know that you are lying to him. Yeah. So now we will see. We are we are going to see some of the other things. What are the various plugins used in uh, in the Jenkins? Uh, we have uh, discard old old build plugins. We have Maven build plugin. We have Artifactory plugin. We have uh, uh, the AWS integrations like S3 S3 bucket plugin and all those things. And you can also customize your plugins for the Jenkins. So what is a Groovy file? How uh, the uh, Groovy has been uh, introduced in your pipelines? They will ask you and you, they will ask you to screen share and write the Groovy file. So make sure if you are telling like you know the groovy language then definitely groovy is very important so make sure you know that what is groovy and all gitlab one of the very important tool uh, in devops field right guys uh, one important thing I, I will say like five star before i speak anything so what this five star concept is every tool in this document has a rest api guys okay like docker kubernetes ansible jfrog right jenkins everything is ansible how you can differentiate yourself from other DevOps engineer is through learning the REST APIs automation. Now, a simple automation I will tell you with GitLab. Let's take you are running, you are working on first print, which is going to end by tomorrow. And you want to create a new branch for the next print and you have to copy this first code of this first print into the second print, right? Cloning or migrating the code from branch one to branch two for the next print. Now, let's take one project we can definitely do. Now, let's take like, Similarly, your team is having 100 repositories where you have to create 100 branches and then migrate the code from this 100 old repositories branches to the new repository branches are very tidy and no one will uh, do that. So for that, GitLab REST API automation is very, very good. If you need similar kind of automations by me to explain you all, definitely comment down so that I can bring those kind of concepts to you so that you or my viewers differentiate themselves from other DevOps and cloud engineers who are outside in the market. So now we will see, yeah, we are we are at a CICD. Yeah, I'm going a little bit fast in this area because anyways, I'll be sharing the document onto this video description. So just check out that, right? So you will not miss anything, guys. So part two, I'll definitely make in depth. We will talk about some of the things. So uh, we are at GitLab, all the other things, uh, I will discuss in part two. So what are the other things? AWS is there. Uh, Ansible is there. Managerial questions are there. How to tackle in the interview. Few of you have already commented. So I'll be bringing those things to you all. And uh, we'll, we were talking at GitLab. In the GitLab, we'll be seeing push rules, commit rules, merge rules, how you are giving access to other teammates. How is the webhook concepts in, uh, uh, integrated in your webhook, in your GitLab and the Jenkins. You have to see that. So any questions if you don't know right just comment down and i will be uh, replying you all so what i am doing right now is uh, i am trying to help as much as people maximum to my capacity and I also i have given a poll uh, the poll will be flashing on the screen where 100 plus people have agreed or have shown their interest for me to start my 
boot camp series yeah the huge announcement which i'll be doing soon i am preparing those things i am setting up the things yeah but for this video right make sure you know all these questions right but definitely in part 2 we will be discussing what are the things what are the design diagrams what are the managerial questions how you need to face the managerial questions if you are not able to answer what is the criteria how the confidence you can build like me the way i am talking in i'll be bringing all those things so don't worry about that and there is a concept of security and monitoring which will be detailedly discussing in our next video in part 2 so with that said i am getting lot much sweat i need to switch on my fan but before that before signing off from today's video i hope you guys are liking my content if you like my content like it if you are really hoping like okay pravin will definitely help you all subscribe to you my channel and share it with your friends whatsapp groups wherever it is wherever you feel like okay someone of your domain or your circle can definitely help please share this video link with your friends so with that said take care guys and i'll see you in the next video bye